Bonjour! Hello and welcome to another gg.co.uk video, this time kindly sponsored by Boyle Sports. Now you will have guessed from my brilliant French accent that we are covering the Prix de la de Triomphe in here. This is a proper, proper race, right? We all know that. It's one of the richest races in the world. It is in fact the richest race in Europe. It's worth two and a half million pounds to the winner. The honours roll is just littered with the best mile and a half is in Europe. Well, we've seen nine of the last 16 winners being the fairest sets. We've seen Trev win it twice. We've seen Enable win it twice. We've seen Ofevra, the Japanese horse that twice came second in that race in 2012 when Solomia picked him up. But that Solomia was a big price winner, 33 to 1, really testing conditions that day. The slowest renewal that we've had this century. Wasn't too much slower than Torquato Tasso, though, that won it a couple of years back at a staggering 72 to 1. So look, while most winners of this race are fancied and single figure prices, if there's going to be a shock, it typically comes on really bad ground. I'm saying that off the bat because I don't know if we're going to get really bad ground this time round, but we'll have to see. I'm recording this on the 17th of September. The race itself goes off on the 6th of October, so there's plenty of water to go under the bridge, and hopefully it does go under the bridge and not onto the track before we reach that stage. Something else that's going to happen between now and then is a supplementary stage. A horse such as Blue Stocking that won the pre Mill this weekend is probably going to have to be supplemented for the race. That has been a real launch pad race for this in recent years. But the pre Niel at the turn of the century saw five of the first seven winners of this century come from the Preniel. And that race was fascinating this weekend because we had Sozi that overturned Look de Vega. Look de Vega had been long a favourite for the arc. But that does mean that Look de Vega has now been beaten at the distance. First try at the trip. Sozi is now two from two at the distance. So while Sozi was behind Look de Vega a few runs back, that form does seem to have been reversed and now franked. Sozi was a real ready winner at the weekend and is head in the market at the moment. So we've had an Irish champion stakes this weekend too. We've got Los Angeles, Shin Emperor, the third and fourth in there. That's me talking about that race because these are the horses that are the top four in the bet. And these are the horses at the moment that are single figure prices alongside Blue Stocking. Now, those races at Longchamp, the race at Leopardstown, and there's also a German derby in Baden-Baden. Those, those, those races have been a springboard for this event. 75% of the winners this century came from either Leopardstown, Longchamp, or Baden-Baden. So again, for the trends piece, it's going to be relevant, but the market is suggesting this too. So speaking of the market, Boyle Sports at the moment have Sozi 4-1, to one, Look de Vega 6-1, to one, Los Angeles 8-1, to one, Shin Emperor 7-1, to one, and then it is 10 to 1 bar. There's talks of horses like Kiprios coming in here, a six year old, although this century we've only had winners aged three to five. So, look, let me go through the trends. I've got them prepped up in here. We'll talk about a few previous races as well as we go through and see if we can work out what it's going to take to find the winner of this race. And maybe we can get the winner a little bit early on as well. So, big advantage to be drawn in the bottom half, everyone. I say everyone, if you don't know the race, you wouldn't know. But if you do know the race, you'll know that it's a big advantage to be drawn in the bottom half. However, I will just caveat that with the fact that the horses that have won from high draws have all been in the top three in the bet, and they've been mostly nine to two or shorter. So, at the market that we've got at the moment, if one of these good horses does get drawn out wide, they can defy a bad draw but ideally you want to be drawn in the bottom half. The majority of winners are single figure prices. I've already said that. They'll have a career high RPR of at least 120 and they should have that peak RPR this season. Sozi put in a one, two, three last time out, which is higher than what Look de Vega's done. There's some good figures that have been posted by a number of horses in it. A good key pointer into who might win the race this year. Most likely would have run in the last six weeks. Ideally plays, but preferably one. And of those running inside the last six weeks. 10 of the last 24 winners ran 21 days ago exactly. So, you know, that's a relevant stat we need to look at. But I think a lot of the horses will tick that box. Should have already run on one at one mile four. Almost goes without saying. They should have three plus runs, but definitely should have two wins this season. So if they've only run twice, they should have been unbeaten. Unable only ran once, but she won. And she'd obviously come in back to regain her crown or retain her crown. And Trev's the same. Trev ran three times, didn't win at all. The only horse to have not won in the season that she picked up an arc, but she was coming back to win it. So you really do want to be running at least three times this season and you do really want to have at least two wins. I touched on the age side of things. Three to five year olds are the only winners this century. You'd probably say three to four would be the biggest bias of winners. But then again, this is a prestigious race where lots of horses will go off to produce uh, future stars. So the age bracket could be a tiny bit of a red hanging. I haven't weighted it with 
uh, runners for age and price expectancy. But I just don't think we could really rule out horses because of age. The market's going to guide us in the fact of the fact that the threes and the four year olds are probably going to be more prominent in there. Uh, favorites, we've had a few 30% of the winners this century. So seven of the 24 have been favorites. Four of those were in the last 10 renewals as well. So the market's been okay, but we have obviously had Torquato Tassa. I think I've mentioned him as well. He won at 72 to one. That was on very testing ground. So look, if you're going to get a winner at a big price, it's going to have to be really bad ground. Fingers crossed and touch wood, we don't have that this year. I've touched on the draw. The bottom half is a big benefit. Now, what will happen in this race is there's a big occasion for the draw so we're not going to know that till much nearer the time all that it will really do is it will have an influence on the market so if the ones at the top get the good draw they'll probably stay where they are if they get a bad draw you may get a little bit of a bigger price so you get a bit of compensation i think priced in there but as i say big draws or high draws have not been a hindrance to horses that have been sort of third favorite or shorter they have been able to overcome that but the preference would be for a lower draw I've talked on the RPRs. You really do want to have posted your peak RPR that same season, unless you're coming back to win it before. We haven't got that this year. We've got a, a new name that's going to be going on the title. So I talked about last time out winners as well. We've had 70%, so seven of the last 10, and 75% this century. Over 80% have placed last time out, so that's massive. And a lot of horses do prep in group ones, but some of those races I talked about at Longchamp are group twos too. So they should have at least run in a group one or a group two. Only Enable, when she ran on the all-weather in a group three of the September stakes, has run in a lower class than a group one or a group two. Um, course form is important to an extent. Obviously, there's opportunities for horses to run here, but then some horses choose not to take that up. If you have run at Longchamp, you should have won. 13 of the 14 runners this century that ran here have won. All four of the last four in the last 10 had run here and won. There was a couple of uh, renewals in here, wasn't there? We had 2016 and 2017. It was closed for redevelopment uh, and it was run at Chanty instead. But winning course form, so winning form at Longchamp is a huge positive, as you probably expect it to be. I've touched on the distance form. Everything should have run at the trip, but they should have definitely won as well. The only one that didn't do that was last year's winner's uh, ace impact. Season form is, I've touched on, you want to have at least three runs, you want to have those two wins in there. We've only had three of the last 10 and seven of the last 24 horses unbeaten. So it's fine to have been beaten this season. 50% of their races won this season. That accounts for 70 to, to almost 80% if you go to the century figures. You do want to be winning the majority of your races. And I touched on there, didn't I? The fact that Enable has only won once and only run once and Trev hadn't won but run three times. They were previous ARC winners. You will be able to forgive those ones. Group form is essential. And I say group form, group one form. We've had... Every single winner, bar Solomir that I talked about, is the only horse to have not won a Group 1, and that was exceptional circumstances. We're probably not going to get that. So, look, they really should have won a Group 1, and 90%, so 9 of the last 10, have actually won two or more Group 1. So that is a big tick in the box. You should have at least won a Group 1. Anything else you can happily, happily dismiss, unless the ground's real testing, and we might get a bit of a shock. Outside of that, ideally, you want to have two Group win so look that's covering the, the the fundamentals of what you would need to know for what it takes to win an arc um appreciate your guys support so make sure you're liking the video subscribe to the channel drop a comment with who you think's going to win the arc this year we'll be back with a bit more insight but yeah a few weeks out now 6th of october get that date in your calendar it is a fantastic race and one not to be missed